when I was in high school, I had this incredibly diverse group of friends. I had lunch with people who included a Cuban Jew and a South Indian Hindu and a Nigerian Evangelical and a Catholic and a Lutheran and a Mormon. And, you know, we did everything together. We played ball together. We had classes together. We did homework together. We talked about all sorts of stuff. And then at some point in, in my high school career, a group of thugs in my school started going after my Jewish friend and they would shout these ugly anti-Semitic things in the hallways and they would scrawl ugly anti-Semitic things on desks. And I watched my friend kind of shrink into the shadows and I didn't do anything about it. I watched this happen and I was a passive observer. And a couple years after that, my friend called me on it and he said, you know, Ibu, the lowest time in my life was when those thugs were going after me and they were going after my faith. And I watched you watch it happen to me and I watched you do nothing. And to this day I ask, why did my friends do nothing? And it brought up for me all these feelings of cowardice and weakness and yeah, I couldn't answer why I did nothing. And I went back and I, I talked about it with my dad. And my dad said something really stern and powerful to me. He said, Ibu, I, I just want you to understand, you didn't just fail as a friend in that situation, you failed as a Muslim. What I do now is, in a lot of ways, making up for my failure then and trying to spread a message so that other kids who are being pushed around in their high schools, that they have friends who stand up for them. Because those friends feel called by their tradition to do that, just like I feel called by mine. If I believe in a world where people from different religions are living in equal dignity and mutual loyalty, if I believe in a world where you're not going to be pushed around because of your religion, then I have to help build that world.